All right, good morning. Happy Thursday to you. Um, we're here down at the Vineyard Center, and I'm sure that most of us have already heard that, um, you know, the restrictions have changed, and we're back into kind of a semi-lockdown here in BC. Yeah. And um, I am just sad. Yeah. Uh, you know what, I was, uh, I don't know, when did that change? Monday? I think it was, it was Monday or Monday Tuesday. it came out, yeah. and... Um, I felt angry for a little bit, just kind of like, I I don't know if it was really angry. I was frustrated, like just, ah, man, I just was so excited to have people down here. Yeah. And uh, so it was just, and and now I just feel sad. I miss, we miss everyone. Yeah. We miss having people uh, down here. We miss getting together. We miss getting together with our families and and just kind of getting back to normal. So it just feels like it wears uh, a little bit more. Um, But you know what, I I also found myself going to a place really fast of um, um, seeking uh, where I'm I'm grateful for things Mm -hmm. and uh, and going, okay, this isn't, this isn't going to knock me uh, way off this way where I I go into some sort of a slump. Um, I can still be, I can still have joy in my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can still be content. And, um, and rather than to let some of those other emotions like anger, which I've seen, <laughs> seeing a lot of anger right now going out towards uh, government, Bonnie Henry, um, yeah. and, uh, and just, uh, and understood, understand it. Um, I understand why people are angry, just, you know, where does that anger go within you? What does it do within you? And is it, is it producing good fruit uh, or is it just kind of, leaving you stuck in this ball of anger so you know some things for our, us to each individually wrestle through within all that but all that to be said um you got anything you want to add to that we, no i think it's good <laughs> we never pre-planned what we're we we're gonna say at all here <laughs> we're just kind of uh, i think we have a few things we want to talk about um first real practically uh friday night um we were gonna have a service down here uh and there was a sign up for that it's all gonna be cancelled but we're still gonna stream on Friday night at seven. Um, We're gonna have some reading, we're gonna have some worship. Um, We're still gonna do something. And so tune in on Facebook and YouTube at seven on Friday. Just a time for us to to be together somehow and for everyone to have a a place and opportunity to, you know, we could get to read the scriptures together and worship together, remember, you know, Jesus' sacrifice together on Friday night. So we do look forward to that even though we can't see you in person yeah yep. that'll be about an hour uh, yep. we'll do that on friday night so uh join us for that that'd be yep. great to to see everybody online there and then sunday will be our regular 10 o'clock uh, yep. we won't be having a 9 and 11 like we had planned nope. it's just going to be the single service at 10 o'clock and we'll be streaming that on facebook and youtube um so that's just going to be kind of how we've been been doing it so why why are we why is it it's easter sunday mm-hmm uh, and and people would arguably say, uh, you know, we must be open for Easter Sunday. How could we not be open on Easter Sunday? So, yeah. you know, um, we're just going to talk a little bit about why, uh, you know, why we're doing what we're doing, and why we're we're um, you know continuing to follow the same uh, consistent path that we have through this entire pandemic, um, in in the decisions that we're making as a church and and how we're approaching this whole thing. So. Do you have some things you wanted to share? Well, about? I wanted to, my, uh, your sister, my sister-in-law, Ronnie, also on our team of elders, um, shared this a while back with me, and I just thought it was really um, a good point. She talked about the, the parable that Jesus tells of the lost lamb and how Jesus leaves the 99 to go after the one. And we often think of ourselves as the one instead of the 99. And that um, in this pandemic, that it's important that that we think of the one. And so I want to read that that parable to you. This is Matthew 18, uh, verse 11. The Son of Man has come to give life to all who are lost. Think of it this way. If a man owns a hundred sheep and one lamb wanders away and is lost, won't he leave the 99 grazing the hillside and thoroughly search for the one lost lamb? And if he finds his lost lamb, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. Now you should understand that it is never the desire of your heavenly father that a single one of these little ones should be lost. That in this pandemic, you know, we hear a lot of talk of like, well, it only affects a small percentage and only affects, you know, you know, the, the vulnerable or the elderly. And, and for us as, as Jesus followers, those are the people that matter. 
the the one percent, the vulnerable, the weak, um, those that are uh, you know other people think is less important in society. Those are the ones that we care for, that we um, look out for, that we have eyes for, that we love, um, and and that we you know make sure that we are caring for them, loving them as Jesus would, as Jesus would care about the one. Well, so do we. So mm -hmm. um, that's that's a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to minimize uh, things by saying, well, it's just a small, a small percentage or whatnot. It's just the same as the flu or whatever. It, it doesn't really matter. Like it, that that kind of talk uh, doesn't fit. Um, uh, doesn't fit the kingdom mm -hmm. uh, on any level. And, and yeah. uh, so you know, it's just not uh, not something that we lean into as far as going around. Ah, whatever you know, the the chances are we protect those that that are vulnerable. We care for. Uh, like Megan was just saying, we care for the sick. We care for, for those who can't uh, possibly take care of themselves. And, and we protect those who can't. Uh, there's nothing worse I could think of than for us to say, we're going to be open on Sunday and to throw out some sort of a blanket thing uh, from Hebrews saying that we must gather and to have somebody feel guilty and manipulated and having to come here now, uh, that their faith would be at risk if they weren't, that their salvation would be at risk if they didn't, and come into this space who was vulnerable and end up getting sick and something happened to them. That, that to me is, is so anti-Christ um, that, that uh, um, I would just never ever go into that direction. So the one matters very much so. The, the vulnerable matter very much so. And we do take that very, very seriously here at the Chillock Vineyard. And that is um, definitely one of the main reasons that we, we go, okay, we're gonna trust that um, Bonnie Henry and the health authorities uh, have probably done more research and have more knowledge yeah. than I do and that yeah. we probably do collectively as a church even though we all speculate we all have our opinions and we're all uh, very good at coming up with <laughs> I find myself doing it all the time well you know what this is this is probably what will happen next this will probably what, and then we just Megan and I will just start laughing we'll be like we, we have no idea what's going to happen next science takes time uh, research takes time for things to walk out and we just really have no idea uh, and so I, I can't even remember where I started with that, but my, my point is is that um, we trust the information that we're getting uh, coming from people that have spent a lot of time working on this. And uh, you know what, we could actually spend some time praying for Bonnie Henry. This year has not been, it's been difficult for a lot of us, uh, for sure. It's also been difficult for her. So I don't think it's been just a cake ride. I know that she has to have security now. She gets death threats. Um, if you look at the beginning from a year ago to now, you'll see what the stress has done to her uh, and just even in, in how she looks. And uh, so it's, um, you know, pray for her because mm -hmm. <laughs> she's having to make some tough decisions and I'm glad I'm not in her position. Um, yeah, did we have anything else we're gonna add to that? I think that's it other than please join us Friday night and for Resurrection Sunday. And we also are offering um, some oh, yeah. really cool <laughs> little treat bags for you and your kids are putting those together. So if, um, if you wanna come by after the service on Sunday, we will be here from 11.30 to 12.30 to hand out. We have some amazing Easter chocolates that we have for everyone that we wanna to give to you. Um, so whether you want it for your children or your grandchildren or whether for yourself, if you just really like <clears throat> chocolate um, and you wanna come by and you wanna grab um, an Easter bag, we would love to say hi to you. We'd love to see you. So. Yeah, come by after 11, the service on 11 Sunday. and 12 30 the back come by the back yeah uh, we'll have the back gates open we'll be out there yeah. and uh please come by and grab those because yeah. uh, whatever's left over we're gonna have to eat yeah <laughs> and uh we don't want to have to eat all right. of that chocolate ourselves um it won't be good for us and yeah. it won't help with the diets so <laughs> yeah. other than that um hope that the rest of your week goes great i hope you can join us tomorrow night at 7 p.m yeah. and uh, know that you're loved um, we're here if you have questions, um, if you, um, you know, are wrestled through stuff, send us an email, uh, give us a call and, uh, we can get together and chat and, and work through it. Yep. Bye for now. See ya.